if you want to become a millionaire, no matter what, and we've talked about this uh, time and time again on this show, but you've got to, you got to, you got to study up on different strategies. So we're going to go over a few of them today. And then you've got to pick a lane, right? You got to pick the one that resonates with you the most that you think your skill set and your abilities and your connections, um, you know, aligns with the most. And then you've got to get really educated. So that's, you know, that's spending time in, you know, reading, studying, reading books on it, listening to podcasts on it, paying for coaching programs, right? I can't tell you how many books I've read about real estate, about sales, about business, because those are all part of my goals. And I also talked about this too, but writing down your goals so that it programs your subconscious about what it is that you want. And, um, and then, so you're thinking about it, even when you're not thinking about it, you're sleep. I dream about it, you know? And then you, you, then you take deliberate focus and you, you find, you know, study the books, you find coaching programs, whether that's, you know, Udemy, you can do them for 15 bucks. I still do this. I did a, uh, industrial real estate, um, course, uh, on Udemy is like 15 bucks, uh, uh, you know, specifically about underwriting industrial deals. I know how to do them, but I was like, you know what? I think I could learn a little bit more here. It's worth 15 bucks. And then all the way up to paying, you know, $30,000 for coaching programs, which we've done. Uh, we're in one right now about uh, launching funds, uh, like real, a real estate fund, but I've done them about buying businesses. I've done them about buying apartment buildings. I've done them, you know, at finding coaches. So, so the first thing you got to pick a path, get educated and obtain some experience. So yeah, we're going to go through the four strategies we've put together here. Um, and then stick around at the end and we'll share a bonus business idea that someone could directly implement that we think could be a million dollar business idea. Yep. So let's go into the first one. Um, buying an existing business. Yeah. I'll let you talk through this one. The problem with starting a business is the, is the, the rate of failure. And I've tried to start a lot of businesses that didn't go anywhere, right? May, either because I suck or the plan sucked or or the timing was too early. Now now I think back on some of them and I'm like, man, if I would have just stuck with it for 10 years, I'd be making millions of dollars a year, but I didn't. And so, you know, for whatever reason, it's getting that initial traction is the hardest part. So what you could do, similar to buying, it's very similar to buying real estate and that's what excites me about it is you can buy an existing business that's got a track record. Um, and the other part that I think this is such a good idea from is, um, is because there's so many baby boomers that are retiring, right? And they've built up businesses over the last two, three decades, you know, that have a loyal customer base. They have a staff, employees in place. And maybe the guy, you know, the owner, the guy or gal is 65 years old and they're looking to retire. And they... Um, you know, maybe they have kids or don't have kids or the kids don't want to be part of the business. The kid wants to do TikTok, become Instagram famous uh, or something, right? And, you know, so the business is left to either, you know, sometimes they just literally unwind and their competitors get their get their revenue. And, and so you can go in and, and find a business <clears throat> that, um, you know, might need a lot of or, or, or could, could benefit from... Uh, new strategies within online marketing, content marketing, social media, um, you know, pay-per-click, maybe the website. You, what I look for is websites that are old, you know, and they look like they were built like .NET, built in like the 90s, right? And they just kept it going, right? And so, and you can look at ways to optimize these businesses with systems, strategies, with technology, you know, and, and put things in place to really streamline things, which will, which will, um, increase revenue and can, you know, optimize your expenses and, and, and improve your, your profit margins. And so the thing is like, if you were to buy an existing business and I'm, and I'm literally looking at one right now. Um, maybe I, I was going to say, maybe we give an example, like to highlight what, like my thought when I think of that is like an HVAC business or a painting company, exactly. right? Like if you think about your dad's friends, right? A hundred percent. My dad has several friends that own an HVAC business or a painting company. Yeah. They're 60 something years old, like they're winding down and they're likely just gonna, you know, send out a message to all their clients and say, hey, I'm retiring, I'm done. And they're out, right? And yeah. the sort of businesses you can come in 
buy that already are producing, already have a customer base. Yeah. And you tweak some things, right? Add some digital marketing in, take kind of the, you know, a lot of these, they don't even have a website, right? They have a, might have a business card. Yeah. And it'd say, call me if you need anything. Yeah. You implement some processes, some enhanced marketing, which yeah. being a younger generation, right? We understand that stuff more. We understand how an online presence and having an, so, having so a, media. A, a social media account really grows. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a great idea to kind of combine those two forces. Yeah. Let's just, uh, so, so an example right now, a partner and I, a business partner and I are under contract to buy a commercial and industrial painting company, which I love because it fits in really well with our uh, real estate business. You know, I'm looking for service-based businesses in Southeastern Wisconsin that offer services to um, someone that would own a real estate portfolio, right? Because we do. And so if you could find some synergies there, and I have a lot of friends that do, that I could offer the services to. So, so let's take the, the painting company in, in general, right? So, and, and I'm just going to do rough numbers, but I want to break it down for the listeners, right? So, because it's actually really, the SBA, Small Business Administration in the U.S., m makes it very easy to, um, to buy your first business. And what I would tell you too is, you know, you think about risk and leverage and all that with debt. The SBA, the rate of failure of SBA loans over the last 20 years is under 2%. So you you got to basically think, all right, if the SBA gives me a loan, I I basically have, you know, a 98% chance that I'm going to at least keep the thing going as is and be able to pay off that loan, right? At least. So if you think you're better, if you if you think you're in the bottom 2% of, you know, uh, performers in business, like then don't do this. Right. But if, if you think you're better than that, or if you think you're in the top 10%, this is a really good way to really supercharge your wealth. So say you want to buy a business and I wrote down some numbers here that does around a million dollars a year in sales. And let's say the margins are like 40% or something like that. So 35, 40%. So the business is making $350,000 a year in what's called seller discretionary earnings, which is Basically, the money that's left over after everything. In in bigger businesses, they'll call it EBITDA. Um, in real estate, it's called net operating income. But either way, so SDE, discretionary earnings. And um, essentially, so so you you buy this business, you can do you can do the SBA requires 10% down. You can negotiate with the seller to put 5% down or hold 5% back. And then you put 5% down. So let's say uh, the business is listed for a million dollars, right? You uh, you basically have to come out of pocket with 50 grand. If you don't have 50 grand, you can raise that from your 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 mama, your daddy, your friends, your uncle, whoever, right? Or, and we could talk about how to structure that too, but assuming you got 50 Gs, uh, the seller holds back 50 Gs, $900,000, um, you, you know, note on a 10 year uh note principal and interest is about uh, let's call it you know 10 grand a month i'm being you know whatever roughly 10 grand a month the business is making 350 you know after after servicing the debt if you just keep the business operating as usual and don't even rock the boat at all you know you just you just satisfy the current clients that you have you don't optimize anything you don't even put together any new um you know, social media or advertising marketing plans or anything, you're left with $230,000 a year in income and it's taxed at a better rate than if you were a W-2 employee. So the, the, the point that I'm trying to make is if you, and, and then, and then just like real estate, as you, as you, uh, operate the business, you're paying down the debt, right? every month, right? You're paying down the debt and hopefully you're improving. I don't know if we can be able to see this and I don't know if I'm doing it right, but there becomes this, this widening gap of you're, you're improving the value of the business. Hopefully by implementing some of these new systems and bringing the business into like the next generation of technology. Um, and then you're paying down the debt. And so over the course of you know, so you're making two hundred thirty thousand dollars a year if you can invest back into that business, grow your business, and let's say over ten years, you get that business to being, you know, doing two million dollars a year in sales. Not that, not that hard to do. In, you know, let's just assume a twenty percent. You know, that's 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 a good growth rate. But you're you're working your ass off. Over uh, at the end of ten years, the business does two million dollars a year in sales, and 
and you're you kept the margins the same roughly you're making 700 grand a year if you just take that business and 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 throw a 3x multiple on the $700,000 SDE you could sell that business for 2.1 million dollars now you just made 2 million bucks right so 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 in 5 years let's say I, i'm I, you, let's say you could sell it for you know one and a half million dollars, right? Less the debt, you made your million bucks there. You could also look at strategies to scoop up smaller competitors with some of that cash flow using the same SBA terms. So you can use this leverage as a as a starting point and and find other bolt-on acquisitions. And I think, in my opinion, I love real estate. Real estate, I think, is the best business and the best way to to build your wealth over time. But if you're looking to do it very quickly. Um, I think finding a, a business where somebody's looking to retire and you can buy that and really optimize their systems and, and find ways to generate new revenue, that would be, in my opinion, the quickest way to, to become a millionaire.